one of the most important elements you will have in your toolbox as a musician are turnarounds, especially for gospel musicians. Now, a turnaround basically is just chords or a melodic line that's used to repeat a section. So you have choruses and things like that in church or, you know, a praise and worship or any kind of song that's going to go back to another section. What are the transition chords that will take you to that section? You need to learn those things because you're going to run into them a lot. So let's discuss. This is Gospel Progressions University. I'm Chris Moses, and I'm here to equip you as a church musician. Turnarounds are used often in gospel music, and a turnaround is just chords, or melodically, we can use a melody line to take us to another section of a song, a chorus, because you're gonna run into those a lot. The reason is, when you're in church, you're playing a song, and you're gonna have a section that just repeats. So they're gonna be chords that are leading up to that section. You're also gonna have a melody as well, you can, that leads up to the section. When we're looking at gospel music, we want to use these essentially for going back to the first chord, the tonic, what's called the tonic or the root tone or the tonal center, or you wanna take it going to a four chord. Now, there are many turnarounds for many different sections of the song, but typically you're always going back to that one chord, like in B flat, if we're in B flat, we're gonna to go to the B flat a lot, or we're gonna to go to the four, the E flat a lot. Essentially, there are two ways to lead or construct our turnaround. So we can use it harmonically using chord progressions or we can use it melodically. So I'm going to do a combination of the two. So typically when I do my leading of a turnaround, I'm paying attention to two things, the melody and I'm paying attention to the voice leading. Now, of course, the melody is going to be in this case, we'll use the key of B flat major, right? And now the melodic line and the passages are going to all be built around B flat. I won't necessarily leave that because I'm trying to get the person's ear at what they're listening to, especially if you're playing talk music or even if you're playing to accompany someone, you don't want to take them too far outside the key where this person may get lost. A turnaround with gospel music is going to be in the order of the two chord, a five chord, and a one chord. So when I say two, if we have B flat as one, C would be two, D is three, B flat is four, F is uh, five, G is six, A is seven, right? So the two, five, one would be C, F, and B flat. Accompanied harmonically, we can have a two, five, and a one chord progression. So that would be a chord progression to take us back to the one chord. It's a B flat, B flat, two, five, one. And we're gonna have that a lot. Now let's take a look at a melodic passage, right? So we have that two, five, one chord progression. So what we can do now is take that and build on the chords. And typically what I would do, I know my two chord is gonna be a minor. So I'm gonna play and lead melodically with my right hand. So my voice leading is gonna be a melodic passage. So the chord would be like this, C, E flat, G, and B flat for a C minor chord in my left hand. And in my right hand, I play the F. So That's a five chord and a one chord. Again, so what I'm doing here, I'm not leaving the key of B flat at all because I want to create a melodic passage to take me to where I need to go. Anytime I do anything like this in the B flat Ionian, it's going to want to resolve as B flat being its home because those are the seven notes one, two, three, four, five, six, seven that belong to B flat. But our voice leading and our melodic leading work hand in hand. Because I'm playing it just on my right hand doesn't mean that I'm not leading the voices with my left hand. So basically, I'm using my left hand to support the chord structure. Because I'm not going to go C, uh, C, B flat, G, B flat, and stretch all, I can't, stretch all the way to this F up here. And it wouldn't make sense. My right hand is just kind of sitting here chilling. So I would do, the first chord is our C minor. So I, uh, the next chord would be uh, an F13. You have your F, E flat. F again, A and D, right? It gives us our F dominant chord. And we were right back to our tonic, our root. Now, if you notice, again, the first chord is going to be a minor chord. 
a dominant chord and we could have some type of major chord. We could have a major chord here or we could have a major seven chord here. Same difference, two, five, one. The numbers are still the same, although it may change harmonically, just to give it some color. Now we know the basic structure, the two, five, one, is gonna give us our turnaround. And it's very common. So to change it up and to spice it up a bit, we can take something like B or a diminished chord and add it. So this is what we'll do based off of a particular scale. I'm gonna show you here momentarily, so. Okay, very simple. What I did there was I did a two chord and then we did the five chord back to one two five and then back to one so if we took another scale outside of the major scale line we just kind of left it and we took these notes here we have B and the A flat that isn't indigenous or don't belong to the key of B flat so that scale here this scale is known as the C harmonic minor and of course we have a C minor chord in there so we know we can use this scale to approach that chord so we have our two uh, five and then one we can use the diminished which is because we have our B A flat F and our D and then go now we can go to C Now we can go to five and we can resolve at one. That's in case you want to go back again to the top. So if you have any kind of movement like that, instead of just hanging out on the B flat for like, you know, four or five measures, you can come here, up a half step with the diminished two chord, uh, five chord and go back to one. So now when we're approaching a four chord, the same concept is in mind. We're not going straight from, you can, this is typical, to go right to the four chord, as in one chord, two minor chord, uh, one over three, and go to a four chord. A better approach would to be to give it a melodic line without your melody jumping all over the place and you know sounding kind of like outside too much. And if that's what you want, it's okay. However, we want to keep it close together so we can give the listener some type of structure for supporting someone as an accompaniment or playing talk music. We don't want to be a distraction. So with this turnaround to get to the four, we can do uh, when we land on our one, and we want now we want to go to four. So we can go. And then, so we can end here in our four, right? So essentially what I did was this. As we go, come from the one chord, right? We're gonna, it has a movement of going, all right. All right. All right. Now we're emphasizing the five of E flat, which would be one, two, three, four, five. And we resolve to the E flat, but then we do this. Or rather, where that comes from are two things that we're introducing. We're not, we're, we're not really playing this, uh, harmonic rather be this harmonic minor scale that we because there's no B flat in it so and this is being supported by the B flat so there's two things that are going on here so we know our B flat major scale we just learned the C harmonic minor scale so now let's look at the E flat major scale quickly this is our E flat major scale we started on here the one that's also known as Ionian if we shifted it and said okay one two three four five let's go to the five Make the five to one and start there. As in one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, back to one. The fifth is the mixolydian mode of E flat. So we have chords like this that have a B flat sound, being still being supported by B flat, but now we can put the A flat in there. The way we're playing it, we're still leading in B flat, but also in E flat. If you notice between B flat major and E flat major. The only difference between the two are A flat and A. So six out of seven tones, most of them match. So we can use melodies and melodic lines and passages that match in between both keys. 
being careful to keep the inner voice. The inner voice is your harmony that is inside. We know that these two, that the B flat rather goes between E flat and B flat. So that's in the bottom. The F here goes between both. But we have our A flat here and here. We're careful not to play it on the top. And there isn't a rule where, oh, you can't play something that is non-diatonic to the key of uh, B flat or the key that you're in. But it's better to approach it melodically so you can have the harmony be more of a color in the middle and less dissonant sounding. So this is where we get this chord from. Uh, and then this chord here, this B here now, leads us to, of course, C really, because it's a half step behind. But just like we use that diminished chord here to get to the C minor, we can use that same diminished chord with a B flat in the bass to get us to E flat major. And that's how I would walk up to it. Because what we're trying to do is have these turnarounds, the last chord, and just changing just something very small. We don't have to change, you know, do a whole bunch of fat chords. Just one or two things we can change and imply E flat by throwing A flat in there. And imply diminished movement. And then, or resolving back to E flat, it being now the new tonal center away from B flat. And that's how these turnarounds work. They're led melodically. As far as lines, remember we're chaining the lines together with uh, tones that match and the the chords or the notes that don't match, we kind of can use them in the middle, like the A flat there or the B to take us to the our four chord. And again, with our one chord, we have our diminished to go to the two and the five and back to the one. I hope that's helped. Any questions, you can go ahead and shoot me any questions that you have in the comment section. I hope this has been a blessing to you. And if you want to learn more about gospel music and how to form chords and what scales to use for gospel music, then you need to check out my free guide. It's at gospelprogressionsuniversity.com forward slash gospel keys pro. It's called What Do Pro Musicians Know That You Don't? God bless you and I'll see you in the next video.